Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at methods for computing derivatives of products of functions and of quotients of functions. Now this is going to continue on our investigations of quick methods for finding derivatives, which are also called the differentiation rules. So if we look at this first problem, it's saying, can we find the derivative of the product of these two functions, the cube root of x squared and e to the x? Now keep in mind we know how to find the derivatives of the cube root of x squared. That is, if we write it like this, x to the two thirds. It's a power of x. We can use the power rule. We also know how to find the derivative of e to the x. That's just e to the x. So we know how to find the derivatives of the individual factors in this product. Is that enough to allow us to find the derivative of the product as a whole? Now, if you think about the sum rule that we have, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. That was a really nice rule that allowed us to compute derivatives of the sums of any number of functions if we knew the individual derivatives of the terms of the sum. Maybe we hope that there is an analogous rule here that says you just need to know the derivatives of the individual pieces and multiply them. The problem is, and this is worthy of a big warning, is that it is not the product of the derivatives. It is not the product of the derivatives. No matter how much we hoped it was, it is not the derivative of the first function times the derivative of the second one. So in other words, the derivative of f times g is not the derivative of f times the derivative of g. Now, okay, it's not enough for me to just say, warning, it's not this. I, I should really show you why, and, and you actually, you know why. You have enough information now at this point to decide whether the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives. So let's look at an example. What I want to do is I want to come up with an example where if I take the derivative of the product of two functions, I get a different result than taking the product of their individual derivatives. So here's our example. It's going to be a nice simple example. Let's look at the function x squared. What's its derivative? Oh, it's 2x. Okay, no problem there. However, if we look at x squared as a product of x and x, then the derivative of the first piece, x, is 1. And so what that means is that the derivative of x times the derivative of x, well, each of those is 1, so that's still 1. And so what we have here is that these are different. The derivative of x squared is not the same as the derivative of x times the derivative of x. So this is to illustrate the fact that you know, there's maybe a couple of exclamation, exclamation marks here, three of them, illustrate the fact that it is not just a simple matter of taking the product of the derivatives. So if you wanted it to be or if you hoped it would be, get that out of your head right now. It's not going to be. So what is it then? What is the derivative of a product of two functions? Is there any hope? Can we try to reconstruct it from the individual derivatives? Turns out, yes, there is hope. And it's known as the product rule. And here's the statement of the product rule. It says, if you want to compute the derivative of the product of two functions, what you do is you take your first function, leave it untouched, and then multiply by the derivative of the second one. And then you add to that the second function, left untouched, multiplied by the derivative of the first function. In Leibniz notation, f times g prime is f times g prime plus g times f prime. So this is how I like to think about it, and this is how you should think about it when you're working on these problems, is that you want to say to yourself every time you're doing this, the derivative of a product, so this is what's going on in your mind every time you do a derivative of a product. Derivative of a product is the first function times 
times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. You want to say that to yourself every time you do it. Derivative of the product is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So let's look at some examples. Differentiate that motivating example there, which is x to the 2 thirds times e to the x. So what's its derivative? Well, it's the first function, x to the 2 thirds, multiplied by the derivative of the second function, plus the second function, times the derivative of the first function. And that's by the product rule, so I'll abbreviate that by PR. Okay, so notice in this first step, I didn't care what the first function was, what the second function was, nor that I knew their derivatives. All I did in this first line here was write out what the product rule tells me, how to reconstruct the derivative of the product from the individual functions and their derivatives. It's not until this next line that I can go ahead and say, okay, what are the derivatives of the first function and the second function? Now I'll write those down. So this is x to the 2 thirds, derivative of e to the x, that's just e to the x, plus e to the x times the derivative of that next piece, that's 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And so there is our derivative. Here we use the um, derivative of the exponential function, and we also used the power rule. Okay, it's not, not necessary to list these things, but just for, for um, completeness here, I just wanted to show you that the various techniques that we've used, the various differentiation rules that we've used to get our result here. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. So try this one out on your own. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so let's have a look at it. One way we could do it, of course, is expand it all out. It's a linear function times a quadratic, so this is really a degree three polynomial. We know how to differentiate polynomials. But it's, since it's already in this factored form, we might as well keep it in that factored form and use the product rule on it. So what's the product rule? It says take the first function, multiply by the derivative of the second, then add to that the second function, multiply by the derivative of the first. Okay, so what are the derivatives of those two individual pieces that we still haven't done yet? Well, the derivative of the first one, that's a polynomial. That'll be 4x minus 1. And the second one, the derivative of x plus 1, well, that's just 1. So I can leave that off there. And there is our answer. Okay, at this point, we could expand the first and then try to uh, simplify by writing it as a single polynomial. But at, at this point, since we don't have any intention of doing anything with the derivative, we can certainly leave it in this form. We have found the derivative, or at least one form of the derivative. Okay, so that's how we can deal with the product of functions. If we know the individual derivatives of the factors of the product, then we can reassemble them in this way to get the derivative of the product. Notice that we're adding things here. So it really doesn't matter which order you write your original functions in, f times g, g times f, nor does it matter which one you differentiate first, because addition is commutative, it doesn't matter which order you add them in. So I've been thinking about it as leave the first untouched, differentiate the second, and then add to that the sort of the opposite. But you could think about it as um, differentiate the first, multiply by the second, and then add to that the first times the derivative of the second. In other words, switch the order of those two terms in the sum. Same result, a plus b is b plus a, no difference, however you like to think about it. The point is, is that we do need to use a rule like this though, where to compute the derivative of the product, it involves not only the derivatives of the individual pieces, 
but the original functions themselves pieced together in this way.